while you explain it. So oh, I'll well, know what actually, you're about. I don't actually have anything to show you what it's done. It's usually used with uh, with cards or combs, rather, uh, English combs. And what they do is, as they clean the fleece out, they actually are going to take and get the guard hairs out of there. They take the roving and they feed it through here and turn it into what's called sliver, uh, which is basically just strings of roving that come out to a certain size for spinning them. So it's basically used as a cleaning and a, and a funneling tool. Really? Now, yeah. Now I another see. now another tool or uh, another way it's used is some spinners will use it. They'll actually run their roving through here and run their yarn out the other side as they're going into a wheel to actually wow. help them keep a more consistent gauge. It gives them something yeah. to look at. Um, so that's kind of what it's all about. Um, and what are the bumps on the end for? And, and these are wraps for inch gauges. Um, what they do... So this is a is centimeter you, on one end and that's an well, inch on the other? Well, this is one inch and a half inch. Oh, okay. Um, so what that does is then gives you a gauge for what a yarn is so you can convert it for uh, certain patterns and things like that. It's going to actually tell you, in fact, there's a... Uh, with the wraps fringe cages, we actually have a card. It tells you what the weight of the card is, basically, or what the weight of the yarn is going to be, as far as fingering, sport, worsted, etc., based on how many wraps you get within an inch. So you just take it oh. and you wrap the yarn around it, count and say, all right, well, oh, I went 10 I times. I see. Okay. 10 times tells you it's bulky. Okay, I you're working see. with a bulky yarn. So, and there's a set in the wool, you know, so and then it gives you suggested needle sizes for working with that particular size oh, yarn. I see, okay. okay. And that's kind of what that's on. And this, and this is uh, for carding? That's a, that's actually a tapestry beater or comb. Oh, really? And so when people are doing tapestry work, they will usually use a bobbin or a butterfly of yarn, and they'll do small sections and just beat down that area of the tapestry uh, and pack it down in with that. And so that's what that's used for. Isn't that interesting? This, this, and this was called a dye... Uh, a, a diz. D-I-Z? D-I-Z, yeah. Diz with... Is or wraps French gear. So it's a diz. Yeah, it's a diz. Yeah. Interesting. I never heard of that. Thank you. No, no problem. <laughs> Very interesting. Let me make it out of the way. I'm right in the way of other people. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes these shows you can actually see somebody working with a diz. If you can find somebody that's doing uh, English poems. Um, can actually see them working with this. Sort of now this is for making those balls that pull from the middle? Uh, no, those are actually supported spindles uh, or Russian, that's a Russian style supported spindle. Russian style and, support? Right, and this is for spinning wool in, uh, or fiber into yarn, uh, especially, and they call it supported because you'll use a bowl or something like that and spin in here and you build your yarn up on the shaft. Oh, going. I see, but then of course it's not I guess it gets spin in it, doesn't it? It does get spin, yeah. In fact, in fact uh, the way they actually teach spinning to children in uh, uh, down South America, especially Brazil, is they'll start them with just a stick. And, and they'll just have them do the, introduce the twist using a stick on their leg. And, oh. and then once they've got some twist in there, then they draft out some, wrap it onto the stick, and then twist some more. <laughs> really? So, yeah. And this just speeds up the process, having a weight at the top that keeps it going. Right, um, I but see. But when you're using something like that, you're usually not going for a thicker yarn. You're going pretty much what they call lace whip, which is about as thick as that. <laughs> it's thread. Wow. <laughs> okay. And so it doesn't slow it down the way uh, a heavier wool will. Um, so they will actually come out with stuff. And then this loose set braiding, this is... I think I just was shown a demonstration of using that, and that's for making a square. That, that'll make actually cord. Um, this is actually an example of a, a lucided cord right here. And what it is, is it's knitted, basically, um, done on two times. I had some out for dawn, they're sold. <laughs> so, but what that, that, and so what they did traditionally okay. with that is they used it for decorative work on dresses and clothing and stuff like that. So they oh, would actually loose these cords and then stitch it onto the uh, clothes with a hidden stitch. They would actually hide the uh, right. thread behind it Isn't and do patterns on the clothing with it. Thank you so much. So this is N Mill Point Emporium. Where are you located? Uh, Amsterdam, New York.
Amsterdam. Yeah, oh. which was out near Schenectady, Albany.